All right, a first-person shooter walking story here. I think you caught that that was the Dunker Church at Antietam. I'm standing on the Dunker Church Ridge. That's the Maryland Monument. And through the trees here, you might be able to catch some of the New York State Monument and, of course, the Visitor Center over there and this hill scene of famous photographs. And I'm going to show some of the famous and less famous one, uh, ones to tell a visual story of the Dunker Church here, which I think require me to stop walking, so I hope you'll excuse me. Of course, September 17th, 1862, the whitewashed nature standing out against the West Woods as it does in the regrown West Woods today, stands out uh, like a beacon. It was very visible from all around and the Dunker Church uh, became sort of one of the epicenters of the fighting um, of several epicenters at the Battle of Sharpsburg or the Battle of Antietam. Of course, uh, just a few days later, probably September 20th, 1862, Alexander Gardner and his crew recorded uh, photos, the first photos, uh, along with the Bloody Lane and others around here, of uh, American dead on a battlefield. This is on the ridge right behind me. You can see some of the damage to the church over there. Uh, there were several pictures taken of the church, um, as well as other photos looking off in that direction. The photographer almost pro pro provided us with a sort of panorama of the area. In June of 1863, uh, Gardner's brother, James, came back and photographed the repaired Dunker Church that you can see right here. So good, Dunker Church is in great shape, right? Well, it was for a while, for, you know, not quite six decades when a terrible windstorm came and leveled the Dunker Church. Uh, you know, and I mean leveled it. There's a few different pictures of it. This is May of 1921. Um, you know, you may have heard the story before of the three little pigs saying that, you know, wind can't blow down a brick building. Well, this one did. Maybe it was a hurricane or maybe it had been weakened by uh, relic hunters and souvenir seekers grabbing bricks from the famous structure. In any case, a guy named Elmer Boyer came over here at that time and was able to secure, um, you know, some bricks some floorboards, uh, some of the window frames and things like that. And he just kind of disappeared for a while. While, okay. Um, in the meantime, they put up another structure on the old foundation here. Uh, this was a service stand, a souvenir shop, and as shown here, let me zoom in on the sign here. Poffenberger's Lunchroom on the foundation of old Dunker Church. Man, they were using up the marketing. This might seem a little bit tasteless, but this is the 1930s here. Does any of us here think it's going to be 2071 before we have the Ground Zero Cafe um, in downtown, uh, you know, Manhattan? So we'll see. Um, like I said, it became a service station and whatnot, but ultimately the U.S. government is going to be able to secure um, this site. There, in, in fact, it's actually the Maryland uh, County, Washington County gets it first and the government gets involved and there the structure is taken down and it sits as a foundation for many years for more than a decade um, we're talking about some of the 40s and into the 50s um, it sat just like this and in fact that sign that you see there now is over there near the Maryland Monument, just as a point of interest. But around that time, back comes a guy that I mentioned before, Elmer Boyer. And Elmer Boyer says, hey, U.S. government, guess what I got? I got pews, I got floorboards, I've got bricks, I've got window frames, and you can have them all for $35,000 or something like that. And the government said, no way. And he said, okay. How about $3,000? <laughs> the government said, okay, yes. So they got all of uh, Boyer's stuff. And in 1961-62, uh, they're going to be able to rebuild the Dunker Church using partly old materials, especially the old Boyer's bricks are right there, um, actually uh, right near the front door. The floorboards are the first ones you see when you walk in. The window frames, a lot of them are original. You can see soldiers' carvings in them. And they did it just in time for the 100th anniversary of the battle, September of 1962. Of course, after that... Uh, it's going to take a while for the government to secure the land around the Dunker Church. You can even see here, it looks like I'm seeing some, you know, uh, you know, homes around here. And there's the Dunker Church just among them. You see the West Woods had been long denuded by then. And you'll, what you'll find is that this battlefield has been largely preserved in the last 30 years. The Antietam plan only allowed for thin strips of battlefield land to be preserved. And, um, what I'll say over here is that the National Park Service, other partners, the Safe Historic Antietam Foundation, and of course, the American Battlefield Trust have been very involved in trying to uh, complete this battlefield. And it is getting close. I mean, even the approach to the Bloody Lane and the cornfield weren't preserved 30 years ago. And what I'm looking at now is something we all did together here at the Trust with our partners at Shaft, And that is what we call the epicenter at Antietam, because this is where it all came together, where the bloody fighting came together. That's the Hagerstown Pike. It's 
It's bounded by that. This is the Smoketown Road. It's bounded by that. The East Woods, the West Woods, the Cornfield are all on the bounds of this particular property, 44 acres, that you, the members of the American Battlefield Trust, were able to help us secure um, several years ago. And I'm happy to report that just a few months ago, it was transferred to the place it belongs, into the holdings of the National Park Service.